She's a little on the tired side today, but we'll give her that because uh, chemo is not the easiest thing in the world, right? No, not always. Yeah. As we know, she's going through uh, uh, some chemotherapy for, uh, what do you go through chemotherapy for? I guess a bad cold. Uh, yeah. So anyway, how you doing? Uh, outside of I'm doing, town. I'm doing fine. Yeah. I'm doing very well. Uh huh. And uh, any new word from the doctors about your prognosis and so on? Or oh, they only do that every few weeks. But mm -hmm. uh, but um, obviously, I'm I'm doing well. Um, I just got you know they do blood tests, which won't won't tell you the important stuff that the CT scan does, but it helps to indicate what's happening. Yeah. And the latest blood tests on Thursday came back same as two weeks ago. So, so it's good. The status quo. So it's good. Um, and that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it'll be a while before we do a, a, you know, another month or two before we do a CT scan or not. Um, and I mean, my biggest problem right now is yeah. breathing. Yeah. Um, and as soon as we're done here. There's a prescription for me at the pharmacy I need to go get that should help with that. But then I have to see a pulmonologist. And, Alex, it is just a joke. I have 10 doctors now. I mean, you start with a primary care guy. You've got your – the guy, or in my case, a woman, a, the two of them that are oncologists. I've got a palliative care physician. I have – well, you know, I just can't even remember. <laughs> well, what you've become is a medical industry. Pardon me? you become a medical industry. A medical? Industry. Industry? Yeah, yeah. You're keeping 10 people alive financially. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, you know, but they slice and dice uh, treatment. Who treats what piece of your body or whatever's wrong with you? They slice and dice it among doctors. So I'm pretty sure there's a doctor who only takes care of this little finger, you know? Yeah. Um, it's re I mean, it's funny. And they're all good doctors. And I just have trouble knowing which one when. So, yeah. But do you have one main doctor who looks overlooks everything? Well, the oncologist looks over all of my cancer treatment. Yeah. Which is the major thing that goes on. But um, then there's the primary care physician. And apparently... The way it works within these medical facilities is anything that the, uh, the specialists don't want to deal with, they shove off onto the primary care guy. Wow. <laughs> and, wow. And you hope they talk to each other once in a while, you know? <laughs> oh, geez. That's uh, amazing. It's the way it is. Yeah. It's the way it uh, is. You know, I, I, it... it and by the way, yeah. they've done very... I don't know if we've said this before yeah. in our little recordings here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they've done a very good job, and uh, and it's it shocked me two or three weeks ago when I realized that the last day of this month, May thirty first, will be two years exactly since I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Two years. Yeah. And you know, that just doesn't happen. Uh, you know, maybe 10% of people that happens to. I should be dead. Well, let, let's talk for a moment about the new poster child for pancreatic cancer. Uh, Alex Trebek, Alex yes. Trebek. Uh, uh, he's uh, certainly he's come out with it, the fact that he has it. And uh, uh, he's going to do what he can to beat it and whatever. We know it's, a, it, it, it's probably the least beatable of the cancers. Okay, I think you said there's one deadlier than that. I'm not sure, but it's um, some less than 10% who are diagnosed are alive a year later. Wow. It's that, it's that fast. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, he was diagnosed at stage four, which is the worst possible news you can get about it. Yeah. I was diagnosed at stage two, and I was eligible for the Whipple surgery, which helped enormously. He's on chemotherapy, so apparently he's not eligible for the uh, for the Whipple, and that's because stage four means it is metastasized to other places in your body, yeah. not just the pancreas. So he is, uh, in spite of his very positive outlook, 
the outlook is not positive. Not by the statistics, it's not. Um, but, you know, things happen all the time. I was interested in that video that you asked me to look at, that he was on the Today Show for about yeah. 10 minutes. And that was Good Morning America, I think, is what it was. Yeah. Or it might have been the Today Show, one or the other. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, but all, I don't watch them, so I'm not They're sure all the them. same show. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, what? They're all the same show. You know, it's a, well, you know, not really, but um, it. Uh, I, he talked. She asked him. I don't know the name of the host. Gail something maybe. Yeah. Um, well, that was CBS Morning. If it was Gail King or whatever. Well, I just yeah. don't know because I don't watch those shows. Anyway, it's a person, and she happens to be a woman. Yeah. And uh, and she asked him about. Uh, of, of of having um of, of having a positive attitude mm -hmm. and you know that's a very hard thing and to keep up and he did mention that mm -hmm. that there were times that he was just overwhelmed with sadness and that's something i haven't experienced certainly i've been sad about this but not to the degree that he described for himself but what i think is really important about him is that he is beloved. I mean, there's nobody who doesn't like Alex Trebek. And um, it, uh, and so to have him talking about pancreatic cancer and helping to raise money and going on the walks and the marches and appearing here and there when he can is really important because there, it, it's a small cancer in terms of incidence. There's hundreds of thousands of more lung cancer, breast cancer, the big cancers. And they get lots of research money. But because pancreatic cancer only affects about 45,000 people a year, uh, they don't get as much attention for research dollars. So this is very important because one of the biggest things, and I'm sure we've talked about this before, is diagnosis is so difficult. And that's what happened with Alex Trebek. They didn't find it until... He was in stage four. Mm -hmm. I was just lucky that they found it in stage two. You know, um, yeah. So I think he's terribly important to raise awareness of this because the numbers are growing, yeah. not hugely, but by five to 10,000 uh, cases a year. So it's important to add it into all the other cancers that we're doing homework on and trying to find a way to deal with. Well, now the he, he can do that. You and I can't. But he can do that, and that's terribly important. You know, we always hear about, like, don't eat this or don't eat that, or this will cause uh, the liver cancer, this will cause kidney cancer, or smoking will cause lung cancer. But we never hear anybody say this will cause pancreatic cancer because they don't really know the cause, do they? They don't know the causative uh, factors. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I ignore most of that stuff, unless you're talking about chemicals um you know speaking of chemicals can i say something completely off topic no, go right ahead there is there has been recently several news articles about a weed killer product that is poisonous they know it it kills people yeah and i have read several of those three or four of those articles online from reputable sources and then I turn on television, and there are commercials for the product. I don't. How can how can we know? How can science say this will kill people, and we not only still keep selling it, but we advertise it on television? Is that like Roundup or something like that? I was trying to avoid saying the product yeah. name because I don't yeah. have all of the numbers and all of the facts, and um, so you know I'm trying to be careful. Yeah. But. Uh, but yes, <laughs> that's the product name. And, uh, and I don't understand why we allow that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are very, very, or I don't know that there are very few things, but in terms of cancer, there's not a lot that they say, aside from smoking for lung cancer, that you definitely are probably going to get cancer if you do this thing. Well, they're saying that about this weed killer product, but it's available to anybody. Mm -hmm. Anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Apparently, the FDA hasn't come along and said uh, you can't sell this stuff. 
So they'll keep selling it until enough people drop and they have enough empirical evidence that this causes these problems. You know, I mean, uh, uh, these things take time. I mean, if we think about how long it took to get cigarettes, and cigarettes still aren't illegal, you know, we don't ban the sale of cigarettes, but we know they cause cancer. We know that, well, we, we don't know they cause cancer, they cause cancer, they cause kidney disease, they cause, there are any number of things it can do. I mean, somebody said to me, oh, well, only 20% of the people who ever smoke get lung cancer. Yeah, but 97% of them do get something from smoking, whether it's kidney cancer, liver cancer, uh, uh, any one of a number of others. Uh, so it to this day, we sell cigarettes, and we know they kill you. 97% chance you smoke, you're dying, you know? Mm-hmm. And and yet we sell them, and we sell them at a very high price. I don't know why people don't go rob people on street corners in order to get cigarette money. <laughs> Maybe they do. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, they think that by raising the price on it, they're gonna they're gonna stop people from smoking. You know, I I ran across I don't remember where I read it, and I haven't confirmed it, but apparently someone I don't know if it's state or national is raising the age to purchase cigarettes to 21, or wants to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. <coughs> oh, um, God, yeah. it goes down the wrong way. Right. Um, and I don't, I, I just think if, you know, plenty of people who seem to do everything right in their lives, they eat healthily, they go to the gym, they do all kinds of other things, they get enough sleep. And then they get cancer or some other horrible disease. So it's not, it's, there's not a, although in some cases like smoking, there may be a direct cause. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of things that we don't know why. Yeah. <coughs> so, I mean, but, but all I'm saying is that we've never, uh, I've never heard anybody say, well, don't do this or that because you get pancreatic cancer. Although I have heard that if you're a heavy smoker, a heavy drinker, uh, that could be a causative effect on it. But I, as I say, I had a friend get it at 32 years of age. And yes. the only thing that he did, he's a big smoker and he was a big drinker. Um, but, when you read the literature on pancreatic cancer, the medical literature, one of the causes is smoking. Yeah. But you look at, at, at uh, Alex Trebek, and he is, what, 78? I think. Yes, it's my age. Yes. Yeah, 78 years old. So really he's gotten it late in life. There are a lot of other things that could have gotten him before this, but, you know, at least, uh, and nobody wants to die of something like that, and we all want to live forever, but still he is 78. And so uh, it became opportunistic at that age. Uh, so um, so what, are, what, are the, what are the statistics on people who get pancreatic cancer Older age as opposed to younger, or is, is there no, you know? I don't know what you're asking. Ask me again. What I'm asking I'm just... is, is it a disease of older people? Is it a disease of younger people? Or it does, or it's all... All cancers and many other diseases are called diseases of age because far more older people get that than younger people, but that doesn't mean younger people don't, just fewer of them do. I mean... Think, I mean, you know, you're 78 years old. Your body's wearing out already, whether you had anything or not. So you're probably more susceptible, whether it's a cold or cancer that comes along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just uh, because your body is not as efficient as it used to be. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, these things tend to it seem to be opportunistic as you get older. And so I was just wondering, like, I had my friend at, at 32 who died of pancreatic cancer. Now, we don't hear that age that often, do we, with the disease? I don't know, because the, who tells us unless they're famous like Alex Trebek? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so you don't know. But, uh, you know, it's it happens. Yeah, everybody... It's the old line, everybody dies of something. Um, I think that it's important that Alex Trebek is finding the energy to go on television or show up at different um, things that go on about pancreatic cancer and raising money 
because it doesn't get enough research dollars. There's an article right now in the local paper about a young boy, a 14-year-old boy here in where I live, who has, is helping to develop a very promising uh, test for pancreatic cancer, which there isn't right. at the current currently a 14 year old boy i mean and yeah. you know you, you hear about the kids remember at parkland hospital who really took on activism after that horrible shooting and the young young not women, parkland hospital parkland uh, uh, high school i'm sorry you're talking about parkland high school aren't you i thought i said that oh you said hospital oh well uh, <laughs> sorry yeah um and uh well Okay, now I've forgotten. You know, but, no, but what you were saying is that the, the, these kids got together and did what they did down in Parkland. I, I'm just, I'm so impressed with young people these days. I mean, we only get to meet a few in the press, but they are, they are so smart. And some of them, the ones we get to meet, and they're doing such important things, and they seem to care so much that, you know, if anything is going to save us from climate change, it's going to be the young people. Yeah, right. All right, absolutely. But the thing is, it also affects them more than anything else does. Um, uh, you know, because it's their future. You know, we, you and I, don't have to worry about the, the, you know, the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about climate change. We don't have to worry about the fact that I read an article yesterday that uh, they say that we are on the edge of, of extinction. Please, would you not say that to me? I saw the headlines. That's all I need. Yeah, I don't oh. want to get. I can it, only yeah. read headlines. But, but the on point is, I saw that, thing. and I went, well, I'm not going to be around for it. But those kids will be. Yes. And they, it's important to them. And and that's probably why, uh, to our president, to our a lot of our leaders, climate change isn't a major issue, because they're not going to have to suffer the consequences. If we had nothing but... I know. have a very difficult time accepting that about old politicians. I think that perhaps uh, their need to be reelected, whatever that need is, maybe supersedes this. But I don't believe, I, I can't believe there are people in, in important positions to decide things about our country who think that climate change is not... But, is not but important. there are those. It's the only important thing, by the way. Nothing else is important. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Uh, it it, it is the away, single... I would do away with money for cancer cancer research if it meant we could cure climate change with that money. That yeah. has to come first. Right. Right. We're doomed. N no question about it. Uh, Otherwise. Um, you know, uh, and I, I totally uh, agree with you. I think it is the number one issue. It's the number one issue because it's the one issue that affects everybody on the face of the earth. Okay? Yeah, Everything else earth. is secondary. Yeah. Everything else comes after that. And yeah. yet, I don't think that in Washington, and I'm not talking about just old politicians, I'm talking about all politicians, this doesn't seem to be a major issue. They don't, you know, they, oh, yes, climate change, we got to do something about it. That's the most they will mouth it. Many of them say, oh, there's no such thing as climate change. I've talked to those people, you know. They're a real walk in the park. Uh, they don't think there's anything wrong with it. And you go, are you kidding? You know, are you out of your mind? Don't you, don't you see the statistics? They, they don't believe that, they, oh, that's just natural. That's, that's what happens to the planet, you know, as it gets older. We get climate change. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. Um, and then they go, oh, we had a really um, uh, uh, cold winter last year, so where's all this global warming? They don't understand the whole process of global warming can make things colder, you know. It, it's really, we have bad winters, we've had amazing uh, storms, uh, we've had all kinds of climatological events in the last couple of years that have surpassed <coughs> anything that's gone on before. And anybody who denies that is a fucking idiot. Well, yes. <laughs> there are a lot of them in Washington these days. Mm. All of, and pretty much all of them in the White House. <laughs> the, well, the, the White House, you know, the mockerous, mockery of the presidency. You know, I, I just... Uh, 
You know, I it struck me this morning when I I made the coffee and I turned on to the to a news channel, and it was all about how Trump and his attorneys are now not going to allow. Uh, what are their McCann, names? Ma- Barr McCann. Mc- and, McCann. Uh, there's McGann, McGann and all of these people. They're they're not going to allow them to give the the documents that have been legally subpoenaed, legally subpoenaed. That that is how it is done. When Congress issues a a subpoena, that is established law. It must be delivered. And now they're not going to do it. And apparently, no one's going to do anything about it. Well, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that I just can't understand why any mentally competent human being doesn't feel that uh, uh, if they're not willing to hand these things over, then there must be something that they don't want people to see, you know? And, and, And so it makes them look just suspicious by their omission. But apparently that doesn't matter any more than Trump... Lying. I, it's you know, if I tell you something that's untrue, yeah, and um, and later I get called on it, yeah, publicly, yeah, I would die of shame. Die, I'm just awful. It doesn't matter in the White House. Nobody has any kind of shame. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that that in and of itself is amazing. So you know, getting back to because you do a, a blog called TimeGoesBy.net, which everybody should read because it's just interesting no matter how old you are it it, it's relevant to your life okay because we all get old eventually if we're lucky Mm -hmm. uh you know uh, i'm i'm a very pessimistic person and i probably should instead of looking at my age as as a blessing uh, i i I look upon it as a curse i I don't know why that's me you know me uh You're not going to change it. There's no point in dwelling. There's no on point it. in changing me so now. That video you asked me to look at of, um, of of Alex Trebek. Yeah. He somewhere there in the middle. He talked about how lucky he felt. Yeah. I'm stage four pancreatic cancer, and he talked about how lucky he is. Right. And what he was talking about were the people, whether it was his friends or people who watched Jeopardy, and a bunch of you know that, that know who he is and have followed this, um, that they have sent him so many messages of love and good cheer and their prayers if they're of that sort and so on. Mm -hmm. And that he felt that that does make a real difference. And at first, I mean, just who I am, I would, I would reject that. Mm -hmm. But I think about when I write about what's going on with me, the same kinds of messages I get on my blog from readers mm-hmm. or through email from some of them and mm-hmm. from friends who keep in touch. And it makes all the difference. He's right. It makes all the difference that there are people who care and are thinking about you and wishing you well. And everybody should have this when they're sick. It really, I don't know if it makes you better. <laughs> I don't know if it cures your cold or your cancer or whatever you've got, but it's how you feel. Well, and you feel it, like you feel like that they're that, that you're not sitting here all by yourself. If you're all by yourself, you probably die faster. I'm sorry. If, what? if you're all by yourself, you probably die faster. Well, you know, I don't know that that's true or not, no. but um, but I know about how it feels. Yeah, and that. The, the, all these wonderful people who read my blog and keep saying these terrific things. I, there are days when you're really down. I, mean, I don't have any pain from anything. There's nothing like that. I get very tired for two or three days after chemo. That's my biggest thing. I have a little breathing problem. I'll tell you about another time. But um, it's uh, it it makes all the difference that you're not you're not feeling alone that other people and also their stories help they tell their stories whether it's about cancer yeah. or other diseases they're either living with or have had in the past and survived it just knowing that other people go through it and how difficult it can be sometimes makes all the difference and i absolutely yeah. agree well, with I, I, about I wish what, this for alex trebek there's a guy on jeopardy it was one an amazing amount of money in a short amount of time, something like uh, 
$1.7 million in like... Oh, what, tw- yeah, Jeopardy James, they're calling him. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, and I think uh, Alex Trebek wants to live long enough to see him lose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ronnie, always as usual, great talking to you. And uh, we shall do this again in a couple of weeks, reminding people once again... Your blog can be found at timegoesby.net, as well as this interview which you put up. Good talking to you, sweetie. Talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. Take care.